So pretty much every month now, someone out there discovers an unusual exoplanet. A planet that's too big, too small, too hot or maybe too cold. And in the last year or so, there's already been over a dozen different videos on the topic of unusual exoplanets. But with even better telescopes and more accurate observations, scientists keep discovering planets that are even stranger. And today we're going to discuss one of these planets that we've actually briefly discussed a couple of years ago. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton. And this is a planet known as Gliese 367b. The planet that also received a proper name and so it's sometimes referred to as Tahei, orbiting a star named Ananusa. And these names were taken from various flowers in Chile, mostly because one of the Chilean telescopes played a role in confirming these exoplanets. But originally this particular star system and this planet was investigated by the NASA's TASS telescope, basically the sequel to the planet research that started with Kepler. And TASS so far has been very productive in discovering various exoplanets. And back in 2021, it detected an unusual dip around a star system approximately 30 light years from planet Earth. But interestingly, this dip was happening very frequently, every 7.7 .7 hours, which by itself meant something really unusual. It meant that this planet was orbiting super close, one of the closest orbits to the parent star. So close as a matter of fact, that if you were to simulate this, it would maybe look something like this. And as you can see here, there's a long tail behind the planet. That's probably because it's also evaporating a lot of things from its surface. This planet is pretty hot. The current calculations for temperature suggest that it's close to about 1500 Celsius, 1700 Kelvin or 2700 Fahrenheit. And that's despite the fact that the star is just a red dwarf. So because of the proximity to the star, at least on the day side of this planet, it's most likely extreme. And this is very likely also tidally locked, always facing with the same side toward the star. We obviously have no idea what's happening on the other side. And so because it seems to receive approximately 500 times as much radiation as planet Earth, and because it was so easily visible with the TASS telescope, it became one of the most intriguing discoveries. And because of the proximity to the star, it was also possible to measure the mass of this planet as well. It's actually done using what's known as radial velocity. Here, by looking at the star and how it basically wobbles around the planet, it becomes possible to work out the exact mass of this particular object. And so by knowing how much the star wobbles, which is usually done using redshift and blueshift differences, and by using ESO's HARPS instrument, High Accuracy Radial Velocity Planet Searcher, it became possible to make first announcements about this very strange planet. It seemed to be very, very dense. Way too dense to be made out of just rock or gas. But these were announcements from 2021. Since then, this planet was now observed for over two years with over 360 different observations and calculations, allowing the scientific team behind the recent paper, this paper right here, to essentially work out several more things about this planet but in the process also find two of its partners. And so here's what we basically know so far. First of all, when it comes to the properties of this unusual planet, it is as extreme as it comes. At the moment, it's believed that this is maybe an iron planet or some kind of a metallic world we've never seen before and never thought possible. Now, more officially, these are known as super mercury planets, usually planets with extreme density and potentially relatively close to the star, but in terms of this world, it's really extreme, it's just hard to explain. So for example, it seems to be about 63% the mass of planet Earth, but it's also about 70% as large as Earth, which means that its density is close to about 10.2 gram per centimeter cube. That's practically double of planet Earth, and Earth is already the densest planet in the solar system. Which does imply that whatever this planet is made out of, it's something really, really dense. It has to be metal. Here, the implication is that maybe at least 91% of this whole planet is made out of iron nickel core, with maybe just a little bit of extra stuff on the surface. To some extent, this might resemble the Psyche asteroid that NASA is going to be exploring very soon in the next few years, because this is also believed to be an ancient planetary core, but just maybe a leftover, something that never became a planet. In this case though, much larger, much more massive, definitely a planet. 
Intriguingly, this is also the smallest and the second least massive planet within about 40 light years from planet Earth. So quite a few records. But because of those additional observations from the TASS telescope, two more super-Earth planets were discovered in the same system. One seems to orbit every 11 days, and the other every 34 days. Although not a lot is known about these two other worlds. They're not visible with TESS. But the biggest question that nobody can answer right now is, what exactly happened here to create this planet? How exactly can this planet exist in this somewhat normal star system? And well, at the moment there are three potential explanations. Although to try to first explain this, scientists wanted to find out exactly how old the system is. And strangely enough, initial observations suggest that this is actually a relatively young system, maybe 60 million years old. That's basically like 100 times younger than the solar system. And what's even stranger about it is that it seems to be orbiting in a somewhat eccentric orbit around the galaxy. Which potentially implies that there was some kind of a gravitational interaction with something else early on to put this star on this unusual orbit. So maybe it experienced some kind of a very close passage with another star earlier in its lifetime. That could maybe explain one of the potential reasons this planet exists. Because maybe this planet started as something else. Something similar to Neptune. Or Uranus. Essentially, if it was a gas giant, it could have contained a relatively large iron core. But due to some kind of a gravitational interaction, or maybe even due to planetary interaction of some sort, it lost its far orbit, moving much closer to the star, eventually finding itself very close in the orbit it has today. And at these distances, the gas giant would be stripped completely of everything on its surface. This concept is actually known as Ktonian planets, and we've discussed several such discoveries in the past, where quite a few have already been discovered around the galaxy. Here's one called Chord 7b. But because this is such a young star system, all of this would have to have happened really fast, within just a few million years right after the star was formed. By itself, it's kind of difficult to explain. It's also quite possible that maybe this planet was similar to a typical terrestrial planet or even a super-Earth, but because of the interaction with the other two planets that have recently been confirmed, moved much much closer to the parent star thus explaining what happened to it afterwards. So that's the first possible explanation, migration of the planet toward the star for some unusual reasons. But that's also not a very likely explanation, because as I mentioned this seems to be a very young star system, and so for that planet to lose everything in such a short time, that would require some really extreme effects. At the moment, kind of difficult to explain. The second explanation is maybe a little bit less extreme. This planet could have formed normally inside a protoplanetary disk, but in this case maybe the disk itself was somewhat unusual. It might have had some kind of an iron-rich region where this somewhat strange planet formed just like your typical terrestrial planet. But to date, no such disk has ever been seen anywhere, making this explanation not very popular either. With the last, the third explanation, being some kind of a planetary collision. If this planet collided with something else, it might have stripped the surface of the planet, leaving behind a very dense core, with this collision also influencing the orbit of the planet, moving it to the closer location around the star system. But previous studies, including actually this study, do suggest that collision of stripping as it's known, or basically removing the upper layers because of various collisions, is just not very efficient at producing dense iron planets. It's possible, it's just very unlikely. And so at the moment, None of these three explanations, collisions, iron-rich protoplanetary disks, or planetary migration, seems to actually explain what's going on here. But because of previous discoveries of similar planets, these supermercuries, it essentially suggests that this is a relatively common phenomenon. And it also seems to be related to multiplanetary systems, where the star often contains much larger, more massive objects, slightly farther away from these unusual dense planets. So kind of similar to what we have here in the system of Gliese 367. So at least as of today, it's basically a new mystery. Nobody knows how these planets form, we don't even know what they're actually like on the surface, or what sort of metals they're made from. They're just extremely dense, and very likely completely different from anything we've ever imagined. But these are definitely not the only such extreme planets discovered recently. Around the same time, scientists also discovered a really dense Neptune-like planet 
that we're going to be discussing in one of the future videos on essentially all strange exoplanets discovered in the last few months. That video should be on the channel really soon, so do subscribe if you'd like to learn more. On that note, thank you for watching, check out some of the previous videos on the topic in the description below, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.